again. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. I pray that you have your spiritual needs met today. We're going to bow for a word of prayer at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you first of all for waking us up this morning, allowing us to see another wonderful and beautiful day that you have made. Father, I ask that you anoint the ears of the listeners, Father God, and anoint my vocal cords and speak through me, Father. Only you Remove me so that your people may be blessed. Father, I just ask again that you would bless those that are listening. Father, allow the anointing to come upon me to deliver your word, for we know that the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. And we thank you for it again in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. And now we will have selections from our praise team. Good morning, Light of Life. Is anybody still standing by the grace of God? Sing along with me. You gave me courage to believe That all your goodness I would see
Thank you, praise team, for those selections. Well, we're going to get right into the word of God. My title is, What is the Master's Plan for Your Life? Very simply put, what is the Master's Plan for Your Life? You just think about it. Each day we wake up, a lot of times with our own agenda, our own plans, sometimes not having a plan at all, just going to go with the flow of the day. Amen. It is said, in order to win the day, you must master the morning, very simply. Another way to put it is how you start. A lot of times it's how you continue on and how you will finish. This past week, um, I was excited a night, one night before I went to bed because I knew the next morning I would be getting me a biscuit, a gravy biscuit, chicken biscuit from Martin's restaurant. I went to, to sleep with this on my mind. Or when I woke up, um, waited for my biscuit and gravy to come back. My biscuit and gravy came back from Martin's. I looked at it, biscuit, chicken, no gravy. It ruined my whole breakfast. I allowed it to ruin my whole breakfast. I mean, it really got up under my skin to the point where I just attempted to take a bite of the biscuit. I bit it, and I immediately removed it from my mouth and put the whole thing back in a bag and bought it up and just tossed it on the countertop. Or oh, I actually had it in my bedroom. I, I put it back on my nightstand, and I threw the cover back over my face. I was so upset <laughs> about this biscuit. Really a small matter, nothing to be that, that serious um, about. It was just a, a chicken biscuit that didn't have the gravy like I wanted it. That spiraled my whole day. My whole day was trash because of how my morning started or how I allowed my morning to start. Again, it was not that serious. It was just... I could have maybe went and bought some gravy and, and, and corrected it, but I didn't. I just wanted to lull and, 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 and keep my attitude um, the same in regards to this biscuit and this gravy. Finally, when I did get up, the rest of the day was like clockwork. Everything was getting on my nerve. It was getting up under my skin because the plan that I had in the beginning of the day didn't go the way that I wanted to. It ended up messing up the rest of my day. As a matter of fact, all the way into the evening and the night because of how it started. I never intended for it to be that way um, to the point where my attitude was terrible. I had to end up apologizing to a family member, my, my, one of my children, because my attitude really sucked. But it was because of how it started. How I planned my day to go, it didn't go. Well, a lot of times in life, we plan our lives to go a certain kind of way, and it does not go that way. And we act just like I acted, and the result that we want or want it, we get nowhere near it. Sometimes you have to let, <laughs> let stuff go. It's not that serious. Um, um, we make mountains out of molehills. Not that serious, not that important, and we do that in life. Amen? I say this, or I'm saying this to state, what is the master's plan for your life? You know, there's a plan for us. There's a plan for us, and in that plan, sometimes it's not easy. A lot of times it's not easy. 
because you're not sure how you're going to get to the destination, but the plan has already been stepped. Because if you're a child of God, your steps are ordered. Amen? Turn with me to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Reads, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Another translation says, and an expected end. You see, God knows really the ending from the beginning. He knows the whole. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. God wants nothing but the best for us, so much that he allowed his son to die on Calvary's cross for us. It's a part of God's master plan for our lives, a plan of redemption that puts us back in the proper positioning that we were created for in the beginning that was lost by Adam. Amen? You see, Satan knew that there was a plan. Satan knew God's plan, or he didn't know everything, but he walked so close with God as Lucifer that he had a lot of the information to the point where he said, you know what? He's going to execute or, or exert his plan. And his plan is to be like the Most High God. Because he walked with him and learned from him, he decided within himself where iniquity was found in him, and he came up with his own plan. And it did not work because God's plan is the ultimate plan. God wants nothing for nothing but the best for us. We're his children. Think of your children, those that have kids or father figures or, or what have you. Um, um, you want the best for your child or your children. You, you don't want to lead them astray. You don't want to lead them wrong. If you're a good parent, you don't. You want the best for them. Um, you want to see them successful. You want to see them prosper. You don't want to see them hurt. You want them healthy, happy, and holy. Amen? And God wants the same thing for us, which is why he allowed his son to die. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22 and verse 45 reads as follows. For as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ, all shall be made alive. Verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last, Adam, became a living spirit, which refers to Christ. Christ had to come back and undo what was done by the first Adam. Adam gave our authority away to Satan. He was tricked. He gave our authority away, um, our powers away, our benefits away, our entitlements away. And Jesus died on the cross, got all of those things back as the second Adam. God wasn't surprised or shocked. He knows everything. So when Satan did this, he already had made provision. It says in the scripture that nothing was made or created that wasn't created or that Christ did not create, that he wasn't involved in. So in the beginning, it was already known that this was going to happen, and God already had a master plan in place in the form of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? What is the master's plan for your life? Have you just decided to do what you want to do? And maybe you've done what you wanted to do when it looks like success to you may not be success to God. It makes me think about the rich young ruler when he came to Christ and he asked him, you know, what must I do? I've done this. I've kept all the commandments. I've done this. I've done that. And I've done this. And I'm, he's just proud of himself and what he's done. Okay. Jesus has a way of knocking you off your high horse. And what he said to him was, all right, go and uh, sell all you have and give to the poor. He couldn't do it. He walked away sad. He just turned and walked away sad. He couldn't do it because he was attached to those things. And he felt like those things 
were necessary for the plan of his life. Not realizing what was necessary was standing right in front of him. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Your plan might seem good. Might seem wise. Might seem like this one will work. But if God is not in it, I would adjust my thinking and adjust where I'm getting my information or where even where I'm giving the information to even decide to plan to do what I'm doing. An action of success. You know, if you're going to school, you start out in kindergarten or preschool, and you work your way up. The plan is for you to start and complete it, graduate. Um, sometimes it goes that way, sometimes it doesn't. But that is the plan. Amen? Your life is the same way. You have tests in life that you have to take, and if you don't pass that test, you're going to have to retake it. We're either coming out of something, going into something, or in the middle of it. The thing is this, in God's master plan, this too shall pass. Trouble won't last always. Sometimes it's going to be good days. Sometimes it's going to be bad days. Sometimes it's going to be um, days to mourn. There are days to laugh, cry, what have you. But it's all in God's planning, all in, all in what the master's plan is for your life. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have, Christ speaking, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Not only has provision or the plan for your life been for you to be, to live the abundant life, but to have the more abundant life, more than you can ever ask or think, amen? This is the plan that God has for you. What is a plan? Defined very simply, a plan is a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something, like we stated earlier. Uh, going to school, the plan is to, to graduate. Um, I think about um, my brother Jonathan. His plan was to learn to ride a bike. And uh, it took a while, but he got it. It didn't come with um, out bumps and bruises and bangs and all that good stuff. But it's necessary. It's a part of the plan. It's a part of the process. Riding a bike, you fall enough, you're going to figure out how to balance yourself. It's a part of the process. To the point where you can take your training wheels off because you move to the next level. Amen? Again, a plan defined is simply a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. In Greek, master is kathogist, which means to guide or lead. In Hebrew, master is rabbi. It means teacher. It also means rabbi, which means Lord. Amen? The master's plan for your life is to give you an expected end. A lot of the time, the most difficult part of the process is being prepared for the plan. Think about it. You might pray for God to, um, to do something in your life. And when he begins to do it, you give him free reign of your life and he does it, it might not feel good to you, what he's doing. And in the process, it might make you quit, it might make you try to divert. Either way it goes to get you to that, to that, to the expected end, you can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. You can go straight, which is the shortest distance between two points, 
or you can maneuver around and go around the world to get back to that point, but you're still going to have to go through the process in the master's plan for your life. Amen. And again, the process is what's between is is what's what's before getting to the de the destination or the plan. Amen. Um, I take from my son, my younger son Donovan. One of his saying is, "Lord, mess up my plans for today. Mess my plans up. What I'm thinking about doing, if that's not is that's not what you want me to do, if you're not going to get the full glory out of it." Do with my life what you please. If you allow God to plan your day, it will flow much smoother because you're giving it to God. So you know that the things that you encounter or deal with are allowed by God or it's actually God doing it, amen? Each day, give God free reign of your life. When I have done this, I recall... Um, God, mess my plans up. Let's do it your way. Let's, let's even to the point where what direction do you want me to go? Do you want me to go 85 South? Do you want me to go 285? Do you want me to go um, Roosevelt Highway? What do you want me to do? I went the direction I felt like he was leading me. And as I'm riding, I realized the train is coming. And within myself, I'm like, man, I, I, I ain't nobody got time for this. But hold on. You told God to have free reign. Let him plan your life. What's going on? Is he stalling you from, from, from something you don't see? Is he, is he slowing you down so that you can cross somebody's path to teach him of him? You really don't know. But when you trust him and trust his plan, his master plan for your life, you trust the process. And again, the process is not always easy. Look at Paul the process of the master plan for his life. The man was beat. The man was thrown in jail all the time. The majority of the books that he, he wrote in the New Testament, he was in prison encouraging the church because he knew the plan for his life. And the ultimate plan for his life was to give his life to God. Amen? That's the best thing to do, is to give it, give your life to God. Therefore, he can direct you in your steps. In doing that, you remove Satan's power and ability to just dictate your life. Because if you're allowing God's plan to guide you, Satan, Satan doesn't have the, the, the ability to... to come at you and cause you to think another way. You see, when you have your own plan and you think the way you want to think, many times they can be selfish. Um, they, 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 they may be genuine, they may not be. Either way it goes, is God getting the glory out of this situation? Many times I've made decisions based on my own plan and what I did was open the door to allow Satan to come in give him the option at least to come in and have free reign on my territory. Amen? Maybe none of y'all have done this, but I've done this on several occasions to the point where I've learned and I've passed that test. I'm not giving him place. It says give, don't give the devil place. Amen? In your life, period. Because he is a not a part of the plan. In the beginning, uh, God said that 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 the woman's seed would, bru would bu bruise his head and in like manner bruise his heel because he was going to be beneath him and under his feet. Amen. If we're joint heirs with Christ, that same plan goes for us. Satan should be beneath us, under our feet. He has no power. The only ability and power he has is the ability and power that we give to him. Just like Adam did in the beginning. He was tricked out of it, and he gave it to him. Don't, don't give Satan what's not his. Don't give Satan what belongs to you. And listen, on the way to the plan, 
the process there again, learn to embrace it. I recall um, going to prison, um, being incarcerated, and I just did not see that as the plan for my life. I didn't. But, like I said earlier, I allowed, by my decision making, Satan to enter, and he had the option to do some things, to manipulate some things in my life, and he did so. I thank God for allowing me to go to jail because I was so careless that I could have easily lost my, li lost my life um, during that time because of my focus wasn't on God, um, and Satan had reign over my life. I do believe that God wanted me to experience prison. I don't believe that it was meant, that his plan was for me to experience it the way I did, but God took the perfect opportunity to allow me to experience it since I want to commit a crime. Bless my soul, because in the process, I learned a lot about myself, I grew closer to him, and I learned a lot about my freedom. The irony that jail rhymes with hell um, is kind of funny because jail is very similar to hell in the sense that you're in a compartment with other people who don't want to be there. This is not like where I really want to be. I got caught and I'm here. Your separation from your family, that's painful. That's painful. I used to love to see my um, family come for visitation. It reminded me of the freedoms that I once had and could possibly have again. Um, and it also allowed me to know how valuable freedom is, my freedom in Christ. With my freedom in Christ, I don't have to succumb to the adversary and what he wants for me to kill, steal, and destroy. I don't have to. He didn't have the power. I pray myself up every day before I leave my house. I pray to my angels in the camp around about me, my family, my household, property, loved ones, friends, and enemies, all of my family. I pray for everybody. I do it every day. I'm consistent with it because the master's plan for my life dictates that. Amen? While in prison, I realized, man, in hell, the separation you feel is much worse than this because there is no God. His presence is not there. Your family is not there. Nobody is coming to rescue you. That was not the plan for you. You see, hell was created for Satan and the fallen angels. It wasn't created for you. In scripture, it says that hell has to enlarge itself daily because the plan was for the fallen angels and Satan to occupy this space. But because we as, 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 as human or disobedient humans, we choose not to give our lives to Christ and change our ways, therefore we get the same damnation that Satan gets or anyone that dies in sin. We were born in sin because of the first Adam, but because of the second Adam, we're redeemed from our sins if we receive Christ. Think of Jesus. He knew the plan. He knew what the plan was. To die so that we could live. To come and live a perfect life, give perfect example of how to be a winner, successful, um, prosperous, um, a more abundant life by his example. Look at what he endured. All he did was come to tell the truth. They beat him. They spat on him. This is God in the form of man in Christ. Just think. <laughs> Your redeemer, you're treating like this. Yet and still, he continued on with the master plan. Amen. He continued on with the master plan in spite of. And we must do the same thing. Don't walk about, don't walk about what it looks, looks like. 
a lot of times in the plan, we, we, we don't understand. I remember telling God, I, said, I don't understand. I love you. I love you. And I would, I would never be disrespectful in saying this, but I don't understand. And he didn't answer me for a while, maybe days. But when he did, he said, it's okay that you don't understand. It's not about that. We walk by faith and not by sight. It's about having faith in God. You may not understand why you're going through some things in your plan or in the process of your plan, some things that hurt, some things that anger you, some things that, that might mil uh, mentally capacitate you. Know this. God's master plan will prevail in your life if you allow him to do so. If you commit yourself to that, no matter what, no matter what it looks like, I'll go. If nobody else will go, I'll go. Um, uh, last week when we came to church, um, Sister Maddie was sitting outside, and it upset me because I should have been here to let her in. Um, female, that shouldn't have been so, and it, it upset me. And I'm glad I got upset because that won't happen again. And I let her know, I said, listen, I apologize because that's, that's, it shouldn't be so. That's not a part of the plan. That's not a part of the plan that Bishop left here. So I saying that, I'm saying that to say I had to check myself in that, and it made me realize that, listen, the processing and getting to the destination or the plan is for God to get the glory. It's for God to get the glory. It's for God to get the glory. Humble yourself. Move yourself out the way. Stop thinking about you. You'll be blessed, but think about what it is God wants you to do. What is it that he has planned today, today for you today, today for you to do? That's a part of the plan that might affect somebody years down the road. Amen? Bishop, when he started, he had a, had a little, you've heard it before, a little stamp that said Light of Life Ministries. What's the plan? We're going to start a church. All right. He had a little card on the back. He had a, a mustard seed. Uh, if you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, um, um, you could have, you, you ask what you, you may, you can have it. And that's just the size of a mustard seed. What about a watermelon seed or avocado seed? Or You understand what I'm saying? It's a part of the plan. It's a part of the plan. And if you plant the seed, someone else will come on and water it. It's going to grow and flourish, and God will get the glory. All a part of God's master plan. I'd like to encourage you to trust God, God with all of your heart and lean not to, to your own understanding. Have faith in him and the plan that he has for your life. If you don't know the plan he has for your life, I say to you, ask him. Read your word. Spend time with him. And he will show you what the plan is. Now, he's not going to give you the whole glimpse of what it is. He might give you spurts of it because you will quit <laughs> if you knew what it all entailed. You quit. But we know the destination is for him to get the glory. So whatever the process is to get there, it'll be all worth it. Amen. There again, I just encourage you today to find out what the master's plan is for your life so that you can be blessed and others can be blessed by your obedience and by God working through you. Thank you, and I hope and pray that you were blessed. Can anyone tell me what time it is? It's giving time. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together one time. Let me see you move. Come on. It's the season for the favor of the Lord. Say. It's the season for the favor of the Lord. It's the season for the favor of the Lord. So is thirsty for an hour.
Thank you for your tithes and offering. I pray that God will bless you 100 fold and return it back to you so that you would have an opportunity to give again and continue to be blessed. Jesus said, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Thank you again and be blessed. to carry on the light of light. Is shining on the dark of night can overcome the light of light that burns so bright can take the wrong and make it right, make it right.